Hey guys, today I'm going to review this Polaroid Originals One Step 2 camera. The camera was released last year, I think in September, so it's really kind of new. And it's produced by a company called Polaroid Originals. Uh, the company was Impossible Project before, rebranded in September to Polaroid Originals and they are the only ones that are actually producing films for old Polaroid cameras and for this new Polaroid Originals camera. So the One Step 2 makes Polaroid pictures in the original format. So you have this white frame, you have uh, square pictures, so it's really iconic. So what's about the Polaroid One Step 2? It's uh, uh, price-wise it's 119 euros in Europe and it's 99 dollars in the US. The camera takes the Polaroid original film. You can either use color 600 film or the iType film. And the difference between the color film and the iType film is that the one does have a battery and the other one doesn't. And that's one of the cool things about the One Step 2, that it does not need a battery that's built in the film pack. So before all the old vintage Polaroid cameras, they needed a battery that came with the film pack and that also made the film more expensive. So that's one good news, you can use iTap film, does not have a battery, the battery is in the camera, you can charge it with an USB port on the back of the camera. Good thing, like I said, the film without the battery is cheaper. It's 16 euros, around 16 euros in Europe and 16 dollars in the US and it's uh, the normal film is 19 euros or 19 dollars. So it's uh, quite a difference, it's about 2 bucks a picture. Now. The camera uh, comes with a built-in flash, you have shutter button, you have exposure correcture, you have plus and minus one, so not that many options here. You do have some LEDs that will show you how many pictures you have in the camera, so that's pretty cool. Film comes with eight pictures, so you have eight lights, and uh, one light turns off when you use the picture. And if you don't have any lights on, camera is empty. You do have an on-off switch on the camera here. Uh, basically, you turn it on, then you can use it. You turn it off, then you can't use it. With the old vintage Polaroid cameras, it was like you just uh, open it and it was on all the time. So this is different. Uh, I sometimes had a problem, like problem. Um, trying to take a picture and it's like, oh, something's wrong, uh, but actually I just forgot to turn it on. So you have to get used to that a little bit. If you use the shutter button, camera will take a picture and it will automatically take a picture with flash. So that's also something I you'd have to get used to. Uh, I get to that a little bit later, when and how to use the flash with this kind of camera, but they do suggest to use it for all the pictures. If you don't want to use the flash, which can be like if you're outdoors, the weather's nice and you really don't want uh, to have flash, then you have to press a button on the back of the camera at the same time with the shutter button. So you take a picture and press both at the same time. Yeah, so like I said, you have exposure correction plus minus one. You do have a self timer, so if you want to take a self picture uh, of you and someone else, uh, you have self timer. You have a tripod hole here, so you can use it on a tripod. And yeah, I think this is uh, the main functions of the camera. It's really simple, it's an easy build, and I will now tell you uh, how I like shooting with it. So the camera is really easy to use. That's on the plus. It's small, it's light, uh, it comes with a strap and uh, like I said you have a built-in flash. Uh, what I had trouble with is a few things. The viewfinder, it's not an SLR camera. So you look to the viewfinder but the actual camera will take the picture over here where the lens is. So we do have a parallax and with the viewfinder it's kind of hard looking through it and uh, really framing the picture. So in my early pictures you will see I had quite uh, quite the parallax error. So this will need some uh, adjustments to, so you get used to that. The other thing is that if you look through the viewfinder and I also learned that from other ones that are reviewed the cameras is that you have to be careful to not look through it and point upwards. If you go very close with your head 
you will see you will easily point upwards. So that can happen that you have a lot of sky in the picture that you uh, didn't even want. So be careful trying to point the camera downwards. That is an important tip. Also, if you do that, then it will mess with your exposure because if you do that, a lot of times the camera, it can happen that it uh, will expose on the sky and then uh, the exposure will probably be not what you... So exposure was the big thing too. The new uh, Polaroid Originals color film, it is very contrast heavy and it looks like the, the camera underexposes a lot of pictures. This might be the reason that uh, Polaroid actually uh, advises to use flash with most or all your pictures. So that helps to not underexpose them. Um, so in my experience I, I wanted a lot of light and also using the exposure correction on the camera when there's not much light available. So like I said, a lot of times the contrast was very heavy, it seemed underexposed or even was underexposed. So uh, I suggest try using the plus on the camera for exposure correction. Also try using the flash in situations where you think that the picture might underexpose. If there's not a lot of light available, go for the flash just in case to be sure. So I'm still um, trying to get the hang of it, how, um, what, what times I want the exposure correct uh, and use the flash. And I think it needs some, some, it's a learning curve, it needs something to get used to, but yeah. I think it's gonna go to come to the conclusion now and I'll tell you what I like about the camera and what I maybe don't like about it. Uh, let's start with what I don't like about the camera. So like I said, um, the, the design that you have to, with the viewfinder, and uh, the pointing upwards of the camera, that's a little bit tricky, I think. Also the framing and the parallax is something that I have a hard time with. So I'd rather use one of my, I don't know, SLR 680s or S670s. But it's a thing you can learn and you can get used to it. Um, the other thing I did not like about it, but it's more like a thing of the film at the moment, that everything is a little underexposed and contrast heavy. So that I don't personally don't like that much. I do want like better blacks. That was missing in the Impostor Project's last films. So the blacks were washed out. Now the blacks are better, but also the contrast is too heavy, I think. Uh, but also it really depends on what kind of badge you use from the Polar Originals, because I, the, I, I used film recently where I think uh, that developed really nicely and it was really sharp, had nice flex, but still not that contrast heavy. So I think if they get, um, uh, if they solve that, then it's really... So what I like about the camera is it is really looking very cool. It is small, it is uh, an iconic design. Uh, there is a white version of this as well. Uh, and it looks really cool just taking it with you. I think it also, it's, it's pretty sharp. It does have a plastic lens, but it is constantly getting sharper pictures than the old vintage plastic cameras that Polaroid produced back in the 80s or 90s. So picture quality is pretty good. Like I said, the flash is also pretty good. Uh, and it's really, really, the price point is fine. The cheaper film, this is probably like the best thing about it that you can use the cheaper i-type film. Uh, so all in all, I would say if you want to do, if you want to get a Polaroid camera and it's maybe your first camera then this is perfect. If you have maybe other cameras but I still I think it is a really cool camera even if you have a bunch of Polaroid cameras already I would suggest get one and um, it's really not expensive and you can use the cheaper film so you can shoot more film which is good and yeah. If you have any questions about the camera, about the Polaroid Originals film or anything instant film related, please leave them in the comments and I will get back to you and try to help you as good as I can.